well, Shanks will be able to help out that bottom lane and loss. Puts Shanks in behind the Hecarim, knocked back into Mako, who was in position as well, and I was trying to abuse the tiny little window that they had. Oh, Flash, Shockwave knocked That's in. <laughs> That's what you were talking about. First Blood goes the way of EDG, but the first Dragon goes in favor of Team WE. They're going to use the Onslaught of Shadows to see if you can get anything else going for him. Mako is here, though. They have got a little bit of movement to kind of go for. JJ with two kills. Needs to be a little bit careful. Has no real vision of this, and this is going to be the Ghost Pop Shanks. Has got the Onslaught of Shadows right on top of me. Flashes away. Shockwave, though, is going to be just as good. EDG making plays. Yeah, they're going to go for the exact same play once again. The Shockwave comes in. Onslaught of Shadows, yes, he used two ultimates, but Shanks is dead. Now, Beishong trying to see if he can make something go in his bot side. Flashes in. They oh, get the beautiful. cleanse. Frame perfect. But is it enough? Mako taking so much punishment right now. And the rest of EDG are now kind of coming in. WE, you've wasted almost everything you possibly have to try and make this one work for yourself. Flashes burn. They do get the death sentence and JJ gets the kill onto the Caitlyn. Mystic will also go down at 0-6. But EDG, they're just running away with this game. They are starting to really rack up those advantages and they stop the dragon stacking. That is no longer a win condition for Team WE. It's going to be too far into the future. And now, Breathe, you're in a little bit of trouble. Does get the Dominus pop of Flandre almost going into Mega. He walks into the boomerang and I think that this is going to be all she wrote for Breathe. He might have to try and flash. Oh, nicely done. Flandre has no flash of his own now as Beishon finds himself up in topside. Can he make anything really happen here? No disengage here for the top laner. Deputy, but here we go. Here we go. They do have themselves on top of Jomong and there's a plethora of awards jumped down there as well. <laughs> You're not able to transition, Caitlyn, to other places to work on this turret plate gold as well. You are super far behind. So now when we look at the no, mid game, not getting the chance as the Rift Herald pop down, but maybe they can look for early objective fights. However, this is just EDG going, hey, look, we are the Dirk is coming in. It means that now you actually even the Lord Dominix is going to come through. And it just means that not Flandre? No, Flandre does not have Flash, and they have a lot of damage to try and burst him down, but a TP here from Scout and Shuo being here. Shockwave means that they're just throwing Flan... Or, excuse me, you're just reading them better. Now, jump on! Uh, no. Uh, that is... This is where the game is. Of WE, despite the safety of the Lantern, you've got Viper to follow up. They're able to finish them off. Top Terror, gone. Dragon, gone. This game, out of the hands for WE. Or the space to set up those kind of set, you know, those, those set plays, if you will. And that is just going to make this, you know, this Victor and this uh, Caitlyn pick just so less valuable when you go into those later stages. Now, Here, my friend, you are far, far, far too far pushed up. That is going to be a pretty easy kill. Shockwave comes down. They still have the Onslaught of Shadows if they so choose to use it. And just before Dragon is spawning, that, that's just straight up a mistake. We've talked though. about this, Breeze. Where's your safe place? Yeah. Your safe place <laughs> is anywhere before River. Yep. Once you get to River, that's the danger zone. You know what? Yeah. And when they are so far ahead, and WE find it already entirely difficult to Gotta go for it. 6,000 HP, 5,000 HP. 4,000, Baron now, do you turn off? They're gonna try and go for both, it's a bit of a split call, and they don't really get the purchase they wanted. They go back onto the Baron, it's down to about 1,300 HP. Base shock, Shockwave lands on the two. Scout though, very, very low, he might be taken down. The Baron down to about 450 HP. It will go down to EDG, but they have to get themselves out. They lose two, they gain the Baron, but they lose two more, and now the map kind of belongs to Team WE. And that was the problem that we pointed out with EDG's late game team fighting. Mako and Flandre not synchronizing well. Mako goes one way, Flandre goes the other, and although they do get the Baron, WE get the fight. They're getting gold back in their favor, and a lot of control in this map that they need for that vision. Yeah, you don't really have engage right now, unless you want to go in with the Onslaught of Shadow. Really, really messy stuff for Medici. Honestly, they could have gone a lot worse. Viper stops trying to go for the team fight, and immediately goes, this Baron's down to about 300 yeah. HP. I need to finish this right now. They still have about a minute or so, a little bit more than that, on this Baron buff. So they're going to push in and get themselves a tier 2 on that boss side. Do they go for a little bit more? They actually are going to be able to get down this inhibitor turret pretty low, if not completely down. JJ goes down and tries to get himself a little bit more. Mako, though, needs to be so, so careful. Those Yordle snap traps 
a really good like, hang on a second, JJ's kind of posturing, but not really, because Mako and Viper weren't there. Now they are, though, and that's the engage. There we go. We're going to see. They're going to jump straight on top of Breed. He gets jumped on as he tries to get on top of Viper, but he is dead. Now, can you take down the pony? No, he canters himself out of this fight. Viper jumps in with the killer instinct to try and get himself out. Nice knockback, but these outlaws are so, so low. Can Joe Monk pop off? The exhaust goes down onto Viper, but it's all Viper. It's all Scout, and it's all EDG. They take the ace clean as you like, and they will take this game one. It's all over, Penguin. Beautiful fight from EDG. And as we said, being able to control that vision, deny WE access to the river, and EDG can find the fight and close out game number one. Dominating, controlled, and just honestly so, so clean. EDG give up two kills, a dragon and three turrets in their absolute stomp of Team WE in 29 and a half minutes. And that was a statement. That was beautiful. You know, I think the biggest issue is kind of looking at like, hey, you've only got the Nautilus really as your big engage tool. You can use the cannon barrage to try and, you know, slow people down, allow Mundo to get in on top of them. A big wave here. Shanks in his mid lane, flash in, JJ gets the bear slap, and Shanks is just going to fall, and again, he has the pressure, but this time around, it's been answered one for one. First See, look, Viper, he wants to clear this out ASAP, uh, so he can try and set up for JJ. Oh, Jomong does take the Zenith Blade. They do get the Shield of Daybreak down onto Missing. The TP being committed as well. <laughs> missing, no Flash and nowhere to go. Will he be able to keep this one alive? No, he will not. And they actually get Flashes in and the heal to keep him alive. Two quick kills. So they pumps himself, shut down the top side clear that JJ can go for. But honestly, the damage is done. EDG off to a great start. A couple of cams, give up this Dragon and let Team WE. And this is the thing. Yes, you have the Orianna, but if you do not have that Shockwave, you're potency oh, in these breathe. fights, but breathe. There's the Cannon Barrage, he flashes away, the TP's coming in now, this will be Shanks joining in on top of this, and they get the TP out of Scout as well. So, couple of tentative moves there, Breed stepping a little bit too far forward, but at the end of the day, WE, they stop the Dragon stacking and they get one for themselves. It was an overcommit from Scout, I actually like. Yeah, Mako does get hit by the dredge line, but Beishong and Shanks are the ones who are in this position. Top lane turret goes down, mid lane gonna get hit up by the Rift Herald. So two Rift Heralds into the mid lane does mean that that gets knocked down. Minute 30 until that dragon spawns. Causing too many issues, and EDG are able to use that time. So these are just really nice plays from EDG, where they're rotating better on the map. Now WE, again, have already gone right. We know we can't go towards Dragon. So look, we'll trade this for a drag our top lane turret pressure or presence, probably a better word for it, that WE put into that top side or the bot side jungle means that there's no one who can really... We'll give EDG control in the jungle. Now Peishong is completely caught out. He is completely caught out. Solar Flare goes down and he is deleted. They have the TP coming Couple more seconds. It's actually a bit risky for EDG here. It is four versus five. You need to get the zone control with Breathe and with Shanks. Poke them off, but it's going to be too far gone. Here we go. We're going to get the ultimates out from Viper. As they do get the missing deleted off there. The feathers fly and come straight back on top of them. Flandre, they are going to get the smite down onto the Baron. They get two quick kills. They get themselves out. And oh, actually, Jomong. Jomong, where are you going? He has to flash away over to the back end of the wall. He's just trying to catch any exits. But I don't think they're going to be able to get any kills from this one here. Advantage. And now everything's starting to fall apart. For them. And they will lose this tier two in mid lane. That is a big enough minion. The hook does not hit. They're missing quite a few things. And this is the thing, something that we noticed there just in the last Baron fight was that if Missing does not get the Aftershock, he is so squishy. Yeah. The Aftershock, you live or die by the Aftershock. And that's what we said in the laning phase, right? It's why you actually don't see this Nautilus come out very much. And it was nice for me, DG, to try and uh, or go back towards Leona to counter this. We said Missing was expecting that Rakan. He was expecting something along these lines. But Leona does just as well and does, works so much better in towards the Leon, or into the Nautilus. Oh, Flash, get the Shockwave off as well. There's a Solar Flare down and Beishong is dead. They will get the Depth Charm off though. And that's going to be the rest of the team kind of pushing in on top of Mako. Maybe they stand a little bit too far forward. Trade one for one. I kind of feel like that's a little bit more worth for Team WE. Whoa, Jomong! Going in far, far too deep, but the fight will ensue. Missing, trying to go in there. They get not get the shuffle off. It's a double here for triple for Viper. And this game has gone from absolutely nothing to absolutely everything. Breathe force to flash away. The Immortal Shield Ball will only keep him so healthy. And that's the game.
Viper is going hyper in this game. Manages to get the Gale Force into the recall. Completely destroys Joe Monk. And even when Shanks goes in, he's got more on the tank to outplay it. This is why Viper has been so strong for EDG. Viper has been the catalyst for this team. They will take down one and of you them. probably take the team fight. You probably get yourself back into the mid lane. You probably get up so much more for you. But it doesn't work. It's not how the chips fall. And we can see now TWE looking to see if they can make something happen. Mako gets jumped on here. There's a teleport coming off the backside. He will up Meganar very, very soon. But you're dead. There's a double kill now for Viper. And can he go hyper? Like you said, it's a double for him. Shockwave comes out. Double, 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 triple. It's a full house right now. EDG, they take the last ditch fight from Team WWE. They smack it back in their face. And they will take this series two to nothing. And convincing as well. 15 to two. A 10,000 gold lead. EDG showing why they were undisputed in first place for so long and are wanting to guarantee their spot in the semi-finals. What a win. What a way to win. And this is why.